Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to get a gloss finish on MDF. Um, MDF is one of the most difficult products out there to get a gloss finish on. And the reason for that is it tends to soak up any material that you put on it. And there's a potential for it to swell depending on what you use. So if you use water-based paints on it, for example, there's really a possible issue with that because it absorbs water and then it expands. Um, so again, one of the most difficult products to work with for this. Uh, but there is definitely a technique to it, and the most important aspect of this is how you seal it. So what I've got here is just a scrap piece of MDF. You'll notice if you're trying to do this that the faces tend not to be terrible. They're, they're still difficult, but they're not the worst. The worst is the edges. The edges are all like open grain, practically dust, and they will soak up an incredible amount of product depending on what you use and how you do it. So the first thing that you need to do is of course make sure that those edges are as smooth as possible. What I'm going to use, I'm just going to sand them obviously, uh, and I'm just using some 220 to start with here to make sure that they're nice and smooth. And this is a new, a, a freshly cut piece, so you're seeing kind of right from the beginning. So I'm just going to go over it quickly with some 220 grit. and this. You know, it's worth taking your time a little bit on this. I'm doing it pretty quick. Uh, but if, if you're working on, for demonstration purposes, but if you're working on something important, take your time, make sure it's well sanded. So get the edges, focus on the edges. Again, they are the most difficult part by a, by a lot. And then make sure you get the faces as well, but the faces aren't, aren't as big an issue because the edges are gonna be the hard part to deal with. All right, so. I've done my 220. Now I'm going to hit it again with 400 grit. All right. Now 400 is very fine for woodworking, maybe even a little finer than woodworking generally requires. It's a finishing paper really. So you, you tend to use it mostly just to sand finishes and we are going to use it to sand a finish, but it doesn't hurt to get this a little bit smoother if you can. And 400 tends to be, you know, a reasonable starting point when you're doing painting and stuff like that. I also like to use 600 on a lot of stuff, but here we're going to have to seal this up a lot anyway, so there's really no need for that. Now there are a lot of ways that you can seal MDF, and once it's sealed, it's actually quite easy to finish, but getting it sealed up, that is the difficult part. Um, lots of different methods. You can use catalyzed uh, epoxy primers or catalyzed primers. You can use uh, glue in a lot of instances. You can use even body fillers and stuff like that. But one of the best products that I've found for doing it is vinyl sealer. Now this is just a simple aerosol vinyl sealer. It's made by a company called Bellin. You've probably seen their stuff. They sent it to me. Uh, they sent me a whole bunch of their stuff and they sponsored a few of my videos. Not this one per se, but this is Bellin's vinyl sealer and this stuff builds up very quickly, which is important because it needs to build up to fill that up. It also dries really quickly, which is also important because the longer this stuff takes to dry, the more it can soak in. So we need something that's gonna dry fast. Now they do have the same stuff available in quartz that are even faster drying, but I know not everybody has the ability to get that stuff and spray it through a gun or whatever. You can actually do this pretty well just with a spray can. It should be noted that, uh, that this stuff is super bad for you and, uh, and smells, yeah, it smells like it's killing you right from the second you start spraying it. So if you're gonna be doing this, wear a mask. I'm only doing a small piece here, so that's why I'm not gonna bother for now. But uh, yeah, wear a mask, long story short. Anyway, so I'm gonna give this a reasonably heavy coat be careful if you're doing something with small edges like this. You can't, like it'll absorb some, but you can't just flow it on there or it'll run. So I'm gonna give it a fairly heavy coat, particularly on the edges. And then of course I'm gonna coat the top as well. And I'm just gonna show you what we're dealing with here. 
So the top, if I can get it to work here, has a fairly significant coat on it. It's already kind of building up into a gloss almost. But the edges look very dry. All right, so the edges have already soaked up all of that thick, fast drying sealer. Um, so I'm, because of that, I'm just gonna hit it again real quick around the edges exclusively. All right, so I call that my first coat. Now what I'm gonna do is give this about 10 minutes to dry and then we'll be back to prep for the second coat. All right guys, so this has been drying for about 10 minutes now. It's, it's fully dry and honestly it feels quite smooth, but I don't trust it because it's MDF. And MDF is pretty much the devil. So now I'm gonna go in and sand it again with, uh, with some 400 grit, I'm just gonna sand this finish, sand the, uh, the sealer. Now, the idea here is you're gonna sand most of this first coat off and just leave what's soaked in for the most part. Uh, and then we're gonna apply a second coat and we're gonna sand maybe, so we're gonna sand probably 80% of this coat off and about 20% of the next coat. When all said and done, we're applying two coats, we're gonna sand off the equivalent of about one. So I've got my 400 grit. I'm gonna go ahead and sand most of this off. It shouldn't take very long to get rid of most of this coat because most of it is soaked in. And then I'll show you what, uh, what it looks like once I've done that. It should have kind of a, a lighter hue to it because we're sanding the sealer and when you sand sealer, it's a lot like sanding clear coat. It kind of gives you a whitish look. So yeah, just a quick sanding with my 400 grit. Get some of the dust off there. And you can kind of see what we're dealing with there. It's a little bit uneven looking because in some places I've sanded off pretty much all of the sealer where it's soaked in more. And in some places there's a little bit extra left. Okay. So now I'm gonna apply my second coat I'm gonna apply it very similar to the first one, except I'm expecting that less of it will soak in this time. So we should end up with that kind of, uh, you know, wetter look faster. Shouldn't have to apply quite as much. Again, wear a mask, please. So you need to be a little bit more careful on your second coat because you want to avoid having an issue with it running if it's sealed up really nicely on that first coat, there's more chance that it will run. So keep that in mind. Be careful, you don't have to build it up super fast. And then we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna let the second coat dry. And like I said, we're gonna sand off about 20% of that. So to give you another look here, the top is looking uh, quite glossy at this point. It won't so much when it dries. And the sides, I don't know if I can really show you that without getting my, my fingers wet here. But uh, the sides have also got a decent coat on them at this point. It's still soaking in quite a bit on the sides though. So, like I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna sand a whole lot of this second coat off, just about 20% of it. And then we should be good to apply some actual paint. I'm just gonna use an enamel paint just for demonstration purposes on this. So we'll give that about 10 minutes and then we'll be back to do our sanding and apply our first coat of actual paint. All right guys, so it's been another 10 or 15 minutes now. This is looking pretty good, feels nice and smooth. The edges again are the difficult part. So, I mean, the top was never a concern. I probably could have had that done in one coat, but yeah, this feels pretty good. I'm gonna go in and just lightly sand it again with the 400 grit. At this point, I could go higher. I could go 600 or 800, but I happen to be holding 400 right now, and I think that that'll be fine. I wouldn't recommend going any higher than that, though, um, than the 800, if you're gonna be applying paint after this, because you do want this to have enough grit that, uh, that your paint's gonna stick properly, right? So 
don't go crazy. Don't sand it up to like 3000 grit or it might end up being so smooth that your paint won't adhere to it properly and it'll delaminate. And that's the last thing you want on a project like this. Well, this isn't a project. That's the last thing you want on an actual project. All right, so not a whole lot of sanding this time. Just lightly taking off about 20% of that coat so that it's nice and smooth and, uh, and scuffed up so that the new paint will stick. And I'm just going to use some gloss red enamel here. And give this a quick coat or two and see how it turns out. So we'll see right now. I'll bring it over once I've got the first coat on there. We'll see what we're dealing with as far as paint build up on the first coat and see if it looks like it's soaking in. It shouldn't, at least not much. Been interesting all right all right okay so here we go nice and glossy on top looking pretty glossy on the edges too uh, I should have used a sanding block on those I'm actually I, I put this on a little bit heavy this red um, and if I can get the angle right maybe you saw it before now oh, for God's sake there's actually a little bit of a run coming in here I'm getting a little bit of a sag in the paint um, which is bad because I sprayed the red too heavy, but good in that it wouldn't be doing that if this wasn't sealed properly, if it wasn't soak, if it wasn't sealed properly, sorry, the red would just soak in and I wouldn't be able to get that run. Um, well, that didn't do anything. Okay. I wouldn't be able to get that, that, that kind of sag because the red would just kind of be absorbed. So I don't really need another coat of this. I could just gently scuff that up because it's, it's already got a nice opaque, coat of red I'm not seeing any wood through it I'm not seeing any of it soak into the wood and that's that's really what's important here is that the wood sealed up nicely in those two coats of the vinyl sealer so really that worked about as, as well as you could expect if not better um, two coats not nothing particularly heavy not a whole lot of sanding involved and and we're good to go we've now got a sealed up object that's just like any hardwood pretty much uh, after a coat of sealer so that's in my opinion, one of the easiest ways to seal MDF, get it ready for a gloss coat. And now you can see I, I've put this one coat of, of the gloss enamel on there and it, it's glossy. Uh, I haven't even clear coated it or anything. Um, so that Bellin vinyl sealer is a great product. I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm going to probably use it on a lot of MDF stuff. I'm going to try and pick up some in quartz and, uh, and see how that goes. Quartz, quartz, whatever. Um, and I'm sure that it will work even better because it's, you know, it's a higher quality product. It doesn't come in a spray can. Um, but really, the spray can stuff is perfectly sufficient. It's easy to get your hands on. It's pretty cheap. Uh, I'll post a link to it um, on Amazon in the description so that you guys can check it out if you want to, if you've got a project like this coming up. So hope that was helpful. Uh, again, there are many products that you can use to seal MDF. There are a lot of different ways to do it. In my opinion, this is one of the easiest and the fastest. Um, but do whatever works for you. Just make sure you're sealing it up and filling all those pores. Uh, and those, those are really the things that you need to achieve in order to make MDF fairly easy to paint afterward. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, as always, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.